looking at the drill to test the strength of the psoas and the iliacus. This is something that I do with my athletes. I'll put them on a 12-inch box or sometimes a 24-inch box. And we'll start here, and the goal is to have hands on the head, and then we'll just lift the knee up, elevate it. I want to keep my balance. So this tells us how much strength I use this to assess the strength of the psoas and the iliacus. So I'm looking at it from the side of the head, right here, hands above the head. So what I'm looking for is any type of deviation in our neutral position. They're leaning forward, I know something's going on. They're leaning to the side, one way or other, one way or the other to compensate. Then I know what strength exercises to do to strengthen the, uh, the psoas and the iliacus, and then to go further into our strength training and development, especially when it comes to maintaining uh, uh, efficient striding once we get out in the open field, and once we pass that 30 to 40. So remember this when you're working with your athletes or your clients. Inability to keep the knee above 90 degrees for 10 or 15 seconds indicates a weak psoas or a weak iliacus. Other signs are a cramp at the iliac crest in the region of the TFL, an immediate backward lean to compensate, a large pelvic shift to the right or left, or a quick drop from the top with a catch at the 90 degree point. Now, Understanding the unique functional contributions of the psoas and iliacus illustrates how a weak or underactive muscle can be a factor in both back pain and in the quadriceps strains. So this is just an important drill to work on. It's easy to do, easy to administer. It doesn't take a lot of time to do. So let's work on that in terms of strengthening the iliacus and the psoas and being able to find these points.